right. Um, it's a couple hours later now. I've been looking at particularly prices of things. So there's this great website, nomadlist.com. I've seen the guy who built it on Twitter. He's just like this indie hacker. And I think he's, he's a great, like he just exemplifies that laptop lifestyle stuff. The thing is, I think I don't want that. Like I want to be in a community, high pace, like high energy, lots of things going on, center of everything, city. That is like, I really, really enjoy that. It brings me a lot of energy. And I think like Andrew Huberman is the one who pointed out, it's like high neuroticism people enjoy crazy places like Manhattan, like center of London, because like, I just, I like the prospect of that energy just buzzing and I'm trying to figure out like, is it worth the investment? Because like I, I have an, I have a budget allocated for my personal spending every month and you know, I spend it on the things that I value and, and stuff like that. But that budget is not effectively designed for me to be able to live somewhere like that budget is designed for me to be able to spend, but like it's, it's as, as little as possible. Like I, I, I don't put this rule of just spend as little as possible because otherwise sometimes I violate Like it's not, it's not a good enough rule to follow for me to budget properly. So I have a specific budget with a set number and then that is just for my own kind of personal spending. And I, I don't necessarily hit it every month, but it, it doesn't, it is not designed for me to live like in a tier one city effectively. So if I go to London, it's definitely going to have to, it's going to require me to basically take some cash out the bank of the company and like, yeah. And but the thing is I do consider it like right now, my only priority is what gets me closer to the goal. Like what increases the odds, no matter how, by how little, like what increases the odds of me reaching that goal. And I think right now the decision to live in a tier one city does increase those odds. It, I mean, work. Yeah. And so I want to spend more time in London, New York, Singapore, Dubai, these, these kinds of cities, not Lisbon. Lisbon, unfortunately, it's a great place for me to focus a little bit. Does, does, will that focus increase the odds of me getting to that goal? I don't think so because I need that focus plus the ability to build community and meet people and things like that. Cause if I don't have that second piece, the focus isn't getting, is going to get me nowhere. Right. And at least I wonder if that's a fallacy. No. No, because there was a point in time where I also, I didn't work, I didn't go see anyone, I didn't do anything like that, and uh, basically it just deals trickle in more slowly. I need to increase my sales velocity in order to increase my, my, my odds of getting my goal. If I want to increase sales velocity, I need to meet more people, build more relationships, because all my deals come from relationships. So that's just, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a better, better odds, I'm going to have a better chance of doing that in a city like London. And then there's other considerations. Okay, I want to live in Dubai. Would it be nice to be in Dubai for a bit, test it out? Yes, but I don't have a driver's license. I'm not going to rent a car or buy a car while I'm there. And Dubai is a very driving, you know, driving-ish city. It's not like London or the Europe where you walk around a lot. Dubai is made for kind of driving around. New York, more expensive than London, and I have less of a platform to start with. London, I, I do know some people, and I, I have, like, I have a friend who maybe I could ask to stay to, like, rent his room for a while. Um, cause yeah, I, I don't think it makes sense to pay for a full flat. And if I can, yeah, I mean, basically London, I have a better place to start and it's closer to Lisbon time zone is, well, I mean, to be fair, New York's also a good time zone for the clients that I have in the world over there. Um, so really it just comes down to like, I need to figure out, I mean, New York, I think is. Oh yeah. Also visa considerations. I can be in London for a couple of months and, um, and that's really a part. So I, that I enjoy it's like, I just want to spend some time there and, um, yeah. And I have to figure out okay, if I were to be there, what, what kind of budget do I allocate? Can I, and then what's that going to cost me in terms of like, cause it's going to be a couple of months commitment. It's not some like, it's not as a small investment that I can make into some advertising thing or this vehicle or that. It's, it's like, this is a commitment. And I want to, I'm basically, I think the next step now is I'm, I'm going to run some calculations on my runway, my burn rate. So do I have six months in the bank? Can I, you know, potentially, I would say like, there's this one guy, like I want, I want to be able to hire some, someone else, some, somebody else, somebody new. Um, but the good thing about it is like, I can, I can just run this scenario for a couple different 
So I can be like, okay, here's my burn rate for six months. If I do London and I do this and I do this, here's my burn rate. If I don't do, you know, if I, if I need to, I can fire this employee after the third month to save, you know, burn rate, whatever. like, and I, and I don't want to get to those scenarios, but like, I can just calculate those and, and see what I have at the end of the day. And yeah, I mean, like I have to play with high risk, very high conviction. And yeah, I think, I think it's a worthwhile play. Like this is the biggest thing about why people should go to university, for example, is changing your environment. And I think right now changing my environment would be a really, really good thing. Like it will force me to learn, like to live in a new city. I mean, I've been to London loads. I feel like I basically live there, but to live in it properly, I think will be different and will be really, really useful than going back to Singapore. I think, I think that's the part which I should keep in mind. Now it's just a question of making the math work out in terms of the money. Like it's going to cost me thousands of dollars to live in London and I want to eventually move to Dubai. To be fair, if I hit my goal, those expenses are negligible. Like they're genuinely negligible. All the money that I'm spending for all this, like it's absolutely worth it in the face of that goal. I just need to trust myself that I'll, I'll hit it and like, I will make it happen. And yeah, I think I, like I have to take that risk. I have to kind of gamble the house because otherwise I like, I definitely won't. Well, my odds are significantly worse if I don't do it. Maybe, maybe that's just me perceiving the wrong things and being silly and wasting money where I shouldn't. But to be fair, the money makes me know, like, if I have an extra 20 grand at the end of the year, because I didn't go live in London, it doesn't do me that much good. Like it, it just, it does not do me that much good. It genuinely will not, it will not make a material difference to my life. It, it is right now at this point in time, it's more worthwhile to spend it. Like this is the big thing about, and this is, this is the dilemma I used to have. I used to spend, well, I used to spend, I, I suppose I'd say more carelessly because I was like, well, there's no point having cash in the bank because like, it's going to do me no good effectively. And you might as well go all out, especially, especially if you're planning to run a business that's like, you know, if you're doing seven figures, like the numbers that you lose on now, doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Right now I went too overboard with that and I got myself into a situation where I spent too much and then like I, I was running too close to the line and, and the edge, and that was not a good idea. And if you save, it does like that liquidity means that you can capitalize on opportunities as they present themselves. There may be an opportunity in three months time that shows up and it costs 10 grand to go in. And you know, like if you have 10 K you can do it. And if you don't, because you've been spending too much, then obviously you don't have access to that. And so I, I don't want to be in those positions and, and I am very, I'm acutely aware of that, but at the same time, you can't, you can't fall too much on the other side of like stockpiling cash because then you, you like you, you can stockpile cash faster if you level up faster. And so you have to find the investments where you can make in, into leveling up and whatever. And I think this is a, this has to be an investment in my community. So I have to make budget to go out and things like that. Um, so that's the plan right now. And then I have to have some conversations, see if I can find a place to like, where would I be? And then what months would I be? So do I just, do I stay? I mean, maybe I just stay in Lisbon to finish my driver's license and then go to London and then just stay there. Maybe, I guess I, I suppose I, I should see what events I want to do, but, um, yeah, maybe I just stay here until my driver's license is done. Then I go to Singapore for a conference or something like that when more people are around. That might be interesting. I have to, I have to evaluate the reasons that I have to go to Singapore as well. Um, and yeah, whether, whether Singapore is going to be like a month long thing, a week long thing, or like a three month long thing. And that's, this is all, yeah, I have to figure out like, what are my reasons to be in Singapore and can I make things work out? What are the reasons to be there? There's one conversation with a guy that I want to have. There's a friend that I want to see and just things to pack up effectively. And maybe, yeah, maybe I just go in May and then I come back for the summer. Yeah, that might be a good move. It might be a 
sensible decision just like go in May for a little while then come back and uh, I don't know but at that point am I just going for fun I have to go before June if I want to see my friend and I really don't know this is this is becoming such a struggle anyway this is this is the whole point of like I, I'm just I what I do when I have these issues is I write out a bunch of different scenarios and I try and see which one is going to be the best, which one increases most the odds of my success in reaching the goal. I think that has to be my North Star right now, nothing else. So yeah, and I think I might have to face the reality that actually the biggest odds of me reaching my goal will be in not going to Singapore. That might be the case. And I don't, I think I've struggled to, because I've just, I've just tied myself to these, this expectation that I should go to Singapore. Maybe I shouldn't. So as you can see clearly, very conflicted, which is the same as earlier, but anyway, that's an update. Okay, I'm about to sleep. It's like one in the morning, which is better than three, which is when I've actually been sleeping the past couple nights, but I just spent a bunch of time reflecting on basically what's the one thing that gets me most likely to my goal. And I think that's going to be staying in Lisbon for now and then Basically, what I, what, I, what I realized is, like, I cannot move to London right now. I mean, I'll put it this way. I won't make the most of London right now because of the things that I need to do. And also, I don't think I can set things up in time. Like, I can't just up and leave. And basically, by April... Like what I realized is in order to get to that goal, you know, I, I was saying earlier, I'm like 5% in by next month, I'll, I'll be something like not, not even 10%. I'll be adding two to 3% per month. And so I'll be less something like, like maybe 6% ish. And if I want to reach the goal, I'm not going to move fast enough. And what I realized is I have a certain number that I have to hit per month, April onwards. And if I don't hit it in April, the, that number that I have to hit per month is just going to go higher and higher. And so I was like, okay, then that I need to hit roughly 10% per month in April. And if, if I can continue that the rest of the year, then I hit the goal. Right. And I was like, okay, well, this is the 10% number. How do I maximize my chance of getting there? And I'm going to need new clients and I'm going to need my clients to be worth a little bit. I'm going to be like, basically I've got clients who pay me enough right now, but I need all of my clients to be hitting that range. Whereas right now the average is below what I need it to be. And I was just reflecting, okay, what's the way that I'm most likely to be able to hit those goals? And, you know, is it going to be events, community, whatever? And I was just reflecting on, okay, how have I actually been able to get clients? Like what has worked? It has been community and the, the connections, but there's no way community and connections, like the fastest closing sales have always been through somebody else, somebody's referral, because the best salespeople are happy customers. Like you, you will never be able to sell somebody better than a happy customer of yours. And so what I realized is the highest odds I have of being able to get 10% per month of this goal is if I become the, if I have every single one of my clients saying, to all of their founder friends yeah you guys you have to work with these guys if you don't it will be a mistake because these guys are absolutely incredible that's going to get me enough sales in april like that's the only way i'm going to get there if i try and go the community route build relationships whatever that's going to take time it's going to take a lot more time and there's one community which has the direct like it has the ideal client type that i'm looking for in directly in one group and it's a perfect place but most of the other communities it will take me time to develop relationships and access you know, the series A founders that I want. And so I was just thinking about, um, basically like what, what the, the best way I'm going to have the odds is by joining that community of series A founders and just making those relationships there. Because if I can build some trust, maybe I can close somebody in a month, but going to London is not going to get me that in a month because I like London is, would take me much longer to embed myself in that ecosystem. Um, especially like I have a month before April starts and, and I can't, I can't move to London. I think immediately this month, that, that'll be really, really hard to pull off. And I don't think it will necessarily increase my odds by that much more. 
And with the deals that I have on the table, I have more stuff to take care of. And what I basically have to double down on is like the highest way, the highest odds I have of getting to that goal is making all of my clients become salespeople for me. And that's only going to happen if I deliver such like such an extraordinary value that they basically shout my name from the rooftops. So that is the goal. And then also I need capacity, right? To be able to expand in April and get those new projects. And basically we need, we need to give or take double the number of clients we have on or give or take, I would say double our capacity because maybe we don't double the number of clients, but we increase the size of projects, things like that. So we will need more capacity. Um, but the highest chances are, are definitely is definitely just going to be doubling down on on service fulfillment and making them become like just salespeople for us essentially. Like that's the biggest way we have of getting leads right now. Um, it's building that product, building that brand. I mean, I wonder if there's. Oh yeah, I could run ads. I could run ads with pages and newsletter ads like, like i could experiment all these things but i don't think any of them would prove would get me results fast enough everything all of these kinds of things take six to nine months to really kick in and the thing is i i think you should be acting with a kind of six to nine month latency in mind i don't encourage this thinking of like i want to make this much in the next month or whatever it's just that i set this goal and i don't accept impossibility Based on what I've learned from last year, my best bet will be on the service and on the clients. And if I if I create those headwinds, right? If I create those or tailwinds, whatever, the one that pushes you faster, um, that will make any ads I run go so much better. And and like Gary, this is this is what Gary V said. Like when he was building Wine Library's brand, what he noticed is he was decreasing ad spend, and the customers would increase because literally just like he he just did a better job for the customers that's it's the same logic that i have now it's just caring doing a better job and then building like telling more stories around what we're doing for our customers definitely something that i wanted like that i should and have to do as well but yeah i'm very much excited but we will need to work like i was just brainstorming okay how do i become how do i make it so that they shout my names off the rooftops it's going to be a lot of work. Like it's, it's, I, I really can't underestimate it. And um, yeah, so the plan is just going to be stick around, execute, right? Like become, do make them shout my name off the rooftops during March, capitalize on that in April, hire people. I might go to Singapore in May and then I'll probably try and spend like the summer and the couple months after in, uh, in London. I mean, yeah, I think it would be nice to spend those, that time in London or something. The summer is always a time where people want to travel. So I have, I have to figure that out, but it just, it comes down to like, what's the thing that gets me most, that gets me closest to the goal. Um, where are my leads going to be over the summer? They're going to be at events. Some of those events will be in London. So, yeah, who knows? Um, I think that's that's the, the plan right now. Got to make sure to double down on client satisfaction, just 100% on that. And I mean, like, I was just, I was brainstorming the ideas. I, I, I feel like I should have, you know, maybe I should live stream or film just like while I'm working specifically. But I was thinking of everything, literally like from just writing cards, handwriting cards myself with my shitty scribbly handwriting and just being like, hey, I appreciate you unbelievably. I really want to be do the best for you. Like shipping fast, instant communication. And that means like being on my phone at all times, replying immediately, um, you know, just doing that. I think that's the biggest thing is just being on top of, Doing the basics right and then going the extra mile. And then I've already cut out enough of my work for myself by just doing those two things. Like how can I ship the fastest and 
you know, be super proactive, like add the most value on the team. How, like, how can I make it so that anybody who joins a client company is immediately one of the best performing people there? That's the, the goal. Um, to some extent, I'm still finding my, uh, my niche and stuff like that. It's a challenge, but a worthwhile one, I think, to figure out. And then I also, you know, once I, once I sort that out, like, how do I, basically my question is, like, my challenge is I want to take an agency to multi seven figures. And I think it's definitely very much a possibility. And, and then I, I definitely think I need a, a different vehicle to, 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 to go to the next level because my goal is to go further than that. But I think this is like, I think I view this agency as a vehicle to learn and, and, uh, yeah, if I hit that goal this year would be really, really good. I will. I, I, I genuinely believe with conviction that I will if I fully dedicate to all of the above. But it would be like a 10x from last year. That is extremely high growth. And for bootstrap company, like, yeah. Um, I mean, just double down doing the best job possible going the extra mile, making myself super, super memorable and telling the story, telling the internet more about the work that we've done for our clients. Like I want to share more case studies and stuff. And that's it. And I have to make sure to not get caught up in overthinking my strategy, just stick to the plan, like for a month at least. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to go sleep now, better than 3 a.m. Just, you know, make my sleep schedule a little better. And Tomorrow, I'll just be focused on getting back on the execution stuff and making sure I don't burn out on that. That's the part where the meditation comes in. I was, I've been reading The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, and I think it's reminded me of a couple of those fundamental points of like how to stay on top of those things and make sure that I go at them with energy and stuff like that. So that's the plan.